Historically, BAS has only enjoyed support from the rural and conservative parts of the country targeting the Malay heartlands. Call it evolution or pragmatism, slowly but surely the party is also making inroads into the hearts of the non-Muslim and Chinese voters. Here with us is one of the most recognisable faces of the party, Khaled Samad, who is also defending his Shah Alam seat and he is also the party's central committee member. I'm Regina Lee and you're watching G13 The Showdown. Good morning, Mr. Khalid. Good morning, Regina. Now, for many years, PAS has, um, it, PAS has been seen as a, a hardcore Islamist party, but um, of course, in the past few years, leaders like yourself, Mat Sabu, Dr. Zul, they have all risen up through the ranks. Do you think that it has somewhat softened the image a bit? And has it been successful? Yes. Uh, well, basically, I think all this while, the image of PAS has been portrayed uh, more so by the AMNO controlled media yeah? and as a result of that uh, it has uh, been successful in giving to pass an image of uh, being very uh, hardline and very extreme yeah? uh, even though we've been in uh, Kelantan for many years but it was very difficult for us to uh, break into the mainstream media and uh, uh, as a result of that, people listened to what uh, AMNO had to say about PAS and in particular for the non-Muslims, they would listen to what the MCA and the MIC would say about PAS and of course that made it very difficult, right? But uh, uh, due to uh, various uh, recent political developments which uh, made it uh, possible for us to have direct uh, interaction uh, with the uh, non-Muslim uh, communities, uh, we've been able to uh, explain to uh, the non-Muslims what exactly is our agenda. Yeah? Uh, historically, we've been uh, involved with uh, the non-Muslim uh, communities uh, since from the very beginning. Yeah? But uh, uh, obviously, at that point in time, people were more uh, inclined to uh, opt for the Barisan National because you know they had a lot uh, had a message was, which was a lot easier to understand. But uh, we have to thank the Barisan National as well. I mean, people are, are looking at alternatives as a result of their own uh, misdeeds and their own wrongdoings, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, if they were uh, doing a good job, then uh, people wouldn't be looking at us, right? So, I mean, uh, there's no point, uh, you know, uh, uh, saying that we've changed. It's not so much that we've changed. Uh, we've been saying all uh, basically the same things from the very beginning. Uh, but we were never given uh, uh, access to uh, media. We couldn't find ways of uh, communicating with uh, the other communities. They were uh, quite uh, happy and, uh, uh, you know, um, happy with uh, Barisan National and they, mm -hmm. and they, uh, and they liked it at that. Uh, but uh, since uh, 1998, uh, uh, the Reformasi, uh, this uh, led us uh, to have a lot of uh, interaction with the uh, non-Muslim uh, communities and this has uh, helped us a lot. So yeah. there is no change, I mean, it, with the party, there is no conscious effort mm. in uh, making themselves look more accessible or, or do you think it's just uh, um, because, yeah, alternative yeah, media? Yeah. And right, it's basically uh, that and also <laughs> when, when uh, we did not get much response from the non-Muslim communities in the initial stages then obviously uh, our main area of emphasis would be uh, the Malay voters, right? And this is, uh, uh, you know, not so much by choice. Uh, we've been trying to have uh, interaction and uh, uh, communication with the uh, non-Malay and non-Muslim community uh, since uh, the very uh, offset and the very beginning. Uh, but uh, when the political situation was such, then uh, obviously when we uh, are only uh, interacting with the Malay community, then obviously Malay issues are the ones that are being brought to the fore, right? Uh, but the question of uh, fighting for justice and uh, uh, I mean, fighting against uh, corruption and wanting to do away with uh, racism and uh, racial politics has been in our uh, theme uh, since the very beginning. And in fact, in one of our uh, muktamas, the uh, presidential speech was... Uh, 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 I mean, um, uh, menolak uh, asabia dan menentang kezaliman, yeah, which means that uh, to uh, uh, reject uh, racism and uh, to oppose uh, injustice. So I mean that team has been with us and ever since I was in in past. Mm -hmm. So it's not really something new. It's not a question of uh, rediscovering ourselves, but it's more uh, a question of uh, 
reacting and understanding or or how to say uh, involving ourselves in the new uh, political uh, reality yeah, where when we have uh, greater acceptance from the non malay and the non non muslim communities then obviously uh, we we are going to uh, speak to them and uh, express to them our open our opinion on uh, the current issues mm -hmm. which are relevant to them uh, whereas in the past we were talking only to the Malay community so that gave us uh, a, a bit of a disadvantage and of course at the same time Amno was doing a great job at uh, giving us a bad image okay now very quickly before we go for a short break uh, several past leaders have weighed in on um, the Friday and Saturday weekend what do you think of it uh, weighed in in terms of uh, uh, what what you're referring to that um, in, into well, slang or uh, if it were to be implemented nationwide oh you mean the, the question of uh, the yeah. Islamic law is it or no, no, what? no, no, no Islamic that, law uh, I mean the, the Friday Saturday weekend the, oh the Friday and Saturday weekend yeah. okay alright sorry I, I didn't get that okay I think this is uh, very specific to various states lah, yeah? right. so uh, certain states which are big, big majority uh, Malay Muslim uh, 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 communities, uh, we can leave it to the uh, people to decide. I mean, if the people want uh, and prefer to have Fridays as their uh, holiday uh, and like, do it like what they're, they're, is being done in uh, Kelantan, uh, then uh, I mean, uh, that's the decision for the voters uh, to, uh, to decide. Okay, well, we're going to go for a short break now, and when we come back, we're going to be talking to Shah Alam candidate from PAS, Khalid Samad, about the battle for Slango as well as his battle with Zopiti Nordin. Stay with us. Welcome back. Here with us in our studio is Shalam candidate Khalid Samad, and we were just talking about past's battle for the hearts and minds of the non-Muslim voters. Now let's talk about the battle for Slango. Mr. Khalid, BN is confident of recapturing the state. Now, do you think that Pakatan can defend it? Uh, I think uh, it's obvious that they have to say that. I mean, if they don't say that, then they've lost the battle before it began, right? So let's just uh, consider that as, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, talk to uh, to give uh, spirit and uh, encouragement to their workers, yeah? Morale. But, to uh, morale, well. to boost the morale of their workers. Uh, I, but I think the reality at the grassroots is uh, quite different, right? And uh, this can be seen from uh, the reaction and the response to uh, Barisan Nationals uh, uh, programs. Yeah? I mean, even when the Prime Minister himself comes down, he can only get uh, about uh, 200 people in his uh, programs, and that includes, uh, you know, quite recently, that includes even uh, those people who are part of his entourage. You know? So uh, he can say what he wants to say, but uh, I think the fact remains that uh, we are a very a uh, strong government in Selangor. Uh, we've stayed together, we've performed, and uh, we've delivered uh, almost all of our promises, irrespective of what they say. Mm -hmm. Now, Najib said that your opponent, Zonodin, has been forgiven and accepted by the Indian community. Do you think that this might affect your campaign? Mm, well, Najib talks for the women when he's the Minister for Women. Uh, Shariza is out, Camilia is also out, so he thinks he knows what's good for the women, he thinks he knows what's good for the Indians, and he likes to speak for other people. I don't like to pretend to speak for other people. Uh, I think uh, on the uh, 5th of May, uh, we will see what the votes are like. Uh, I mean, I've gone down and uh, met uh, many uh, Indian voters, and uh, they've uh, told me in no uncertain terms that uh, the uh, candidate put by uh, Barisan National is not an, only an insult to the Indian community and the Hindus, 
is an insult to the Malaysians as a whole. Right? So I think uh, I do not really know what his uh, plan and his strategy is. Uh, Zul Nordin has never been a popular figure uh, anywhere, uh, not in PAS, not in PKR. And that's the reason why he's not contesting in Kulim Bandarbaru. I mean, basically they've surrendered one parliamentary seat by uh, uh, letting a new face contest against Saifuddin Nasution in Kulim Bandarbaru. And if he was such a great guy, he should be defending that parliamentary seat. Instead, he comes to Shah Alam and uh, we'll see what the results are like. Yeah, and uh, there is also talk of your former colleague and former past commissioner, Datuk Hassan Ali, who may be campaigning for Zul Nordin soon. Do you think that will be a dent to <laughs> your campaign or, or not? Well, I think I've been in Shah Alam for the past five years and uh, I've uh, met a lot of people and I feel very comfortable with them and I believe that they are quite comfortable with me. So uh, he, he can come and he can campaign but in the final analysis. I think the people in Shah Alam will look at the Daching and they will decide, uh, respective of who comes and speaks for them, uh, that uh, uh, they want to try Pakatan Rakyat at Putrajaya. Okay, and unfortunately that's all the time that we have. Thank you for joining us again, right. Mr Khalid. No and I'm Regina Lee and keep watching G13 The Showdown for more updates and interviews. Goodbye.